Hi guys, thanks for joining. Hope you're enjoying this. And we are gonna answer one of our other questions. This question was, I have a picky eater. What can I do about it? Good question. We see this question a lot. Um, please don't get offended by my answer. It is just my opinion. There may be some other ones, but I'm biased to mine and I like it. So hopefully you think it makes sense and maybe it'll help you guys a little bit. So back to the question. I have a picky eater, what can I do? Generally, when I start probing clients about this question, that question, what about this, what about that, there's usually a weak link at home. What I mean by a weak link at home is, we'll say mom is very diligent, mom's the one who brings the patient in, mom's the one we get to touch base with, mom's usually real diligent with okay, I'm gonna give us our dog food and I'm pretty strict with our diet and that kind of thing. And then grandpa comes over and hangs out, maybe grandpa lives with us and grandpa just feeds us straight from the table all the time. That is a way, what's called, they're training you basically. Um, some patients just like people are very hard headed and very stubborn. Everybody knows that person. You have somebody that just came to mind when I say hard-headed, stubborn person, you have somebody in mind. Some dogs are just like that and they are very hard-headed. I can run tests, I can run blood work, I can do things as long as they're eating, drinking, peeing, pooping and their behavior is normal and they're just not eating and they're older patient. A lot of times it's because they have trained you they have trained the owner and they wait and they won't eat because why would they eat their dog food when you're gonna give me a piece of your steak, your chicken, your whatever you're eating from the table and all they have to do is be patient and sit there. Most of those patients have done a very good job at training you. <laughs> so as long as everything else is going well, I'm okay with owners being more hard-headed and more stubborn than their fur baby. It's okay if they don't eat every time. A lot of my toy breeds, they just eat once a day and that is normal for them. I have a lot of small patients who very commonly will eat, will skip a meal or skip a day, you know, once a week here and there and that is normal for them. Um, every now and then I have very nervous clients who they wanna pursue it, cross T's dot I's, that is good. If it is in your budget and that helps you sleep better at night, great, that is good medicine, we should look into things. A lot of times you don't know till you look. We never know what we find until we look, okay? That is important to remember. People just have opinions and we don't know till we look. We can think we're not gonna see an infection or cancer. I have found cancer in very young patients just simply because we looked. No clinical signs, no symptoms, nothing on blood work. That is real and every veterinarian who's been practicing for a while and does a lot of diagnostics, I'm sure they have similar experiences as well. So back to our topic, my picky eater. Most of my owners, they need to be get the whole family and everybody who comes into contact with the patient on board. Because if you have three fourths of people following directions and doing what they're supposed to, the patient knows who the weak link is. <laughs> they're gonna go find that person whether you're slipping it under the table. I usually blame grandparents when the parents are doing good. Sometimes you just got messy kids. Sometimes we'll say my dad, I can pick on my dad. He's my dad, great dad. He doesn't always listen. <laughs> if I tell him don't do this, he's an old grumpy man sometimes. He's gonna do what he wants, when he wants, and how he wants. <laughs> yeah, we do the best we can with the cards we're dealt and that is normal. <laughs> but I do encourage owners to try and minimize those exposures as best you can. But if they don't eat, you have everybody on board and they don't eat, if everything else is normal, it becomes a battle of wills. I have had the occasional patient where they don't eat for three, four days, but everything is normal and then they eat. Usually somebody is slipping food or they're getting food somewhere and you just don't know where from or somebody's slipping it over under the table. Maybe a neighbor has food, you're free feeding. Maybe they're eating the cat food and that's why they're not eating the dog food. There's a lot of very creative reasons these guys don't eat for a little bit. So 
be more hard-headed, be more stubborn than your patient, and don't give in. Uh, there's a lot of owners like they won't eat their dog food, but they keep eating their treats. Well, it's because they're being more hard-headed and they're going to hold out for the treat because they prefer the treat over the other food. Yes, they occasionally are sick and there are issues. That's where there is a collective picture, the history, the clinical signs, age of the patient. There's a lot of factors, so it's not always that simple. But once again, generally, if everything else is going well, usually it's a training issue and the fur baby trained the owner and you got to break that habit. Sometimes they've built that habit over years. Those habits are harder to break for both human and patient. <laughs> All right, guys, hope that gives you a little bit of comfort in being okay if they don't eat every single time. But watch for it and make sure you haven't been trained and you're doing the training. And if not, then at least be aware of it and be okay with it and understand that. <laughs> hope that was useful for you guys. Enjoyed it and appreciate everything you do. Bye.